So here we are in the Polyworld Woodland demo scene. This scene's included in the Polyworld Woodland pack available in the Unity Asset Store. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this uh, Polyworld terrain that's here in the scene. I'll make the source terrain visible. This is just a Unity terrain. And normally, for those that have used Polyworld in the past, you know the terrain converter is up here in the window quantum theory uh, menu. We're not going to use this anymore. The new terrain conversion is a component. So we're just going to select our terrain, add component, and do QT Polyworld Terrain. And you get this conversion tool right here. Um, you have your visibility toggles just like before. Uh, you have quad size multiplier, chunk size choice, you have information. We'll go over this in a second. For now, I just want to uh, set a material to apply. And we'll choose the Polyworld Woodland. You can make your own uh, as long as it uses a vertex color shader. And we will just increase that and we'll just do update all. And now it's going to ask me, okay, where do you want to put all the meshes in the prefab that's going to generate? So just select the folder, and it's going to go through and generate all of them. Now something special with this version of the script is that we're generating LODs. We're going to generate one extra LOD level for our terrain so that uh, it gets lower poly the further out it is from the camera. So we have now a converted terrain. It's got some pretty diffuse shading on it. And that's because our blur amount is set to one. If we set it to zero and hit update color, we got it back again. What's also cool about this is that in the old version, you, there was this kind of rendering issue where it would switch to the game view to render and switch back. This, you don't have that anymore. You just hit a button and the colors update. Color variety allows you to specify how much kind of contrast in the textures and vibrance there is. So if I go most and update, it's going to get super contrasty. If I go less update, it's going to be a little more muted. And now we all can, we can also color by quad. So right now it's uh, shading the triangles. So if we go color by quad and update, it's going to shade the quads. Now you can't see it very well because of the lighting. So let me turn off all the interesting lighting I have in the space. There you go. So you can see that the colors are being applied uh, for every quad. Kind of like a patchwork. Um, that's kind of cool. Might suit your project's needs. Um, if we go back, turn that off and update, it's going to go back to triangles again. In the old mesh conversion tool, if we take a look, we have you know mesh type and resolution and then we have the option to chunk it. Well, all that stuff is already wrapped up in the component for you. Um, in the old script, it would create just one big mesh, and then you can chunk it afterwards. And it would chunk it based on strips, and it's not very good. And uh, The script cleans all that up for you. So not only is generation about 100 times faster for polyworld terrains, but it's a lot more efficient. Right here, we have quad size multiplier. This basically takes the base quad size of the Unity terrain. So however big these quads are, which happen to be about 1.5 meters. And you can adjust how big those quads are going to be for your polyworld terrain. So right now, we, we're not doing anything. We're just taking it one for one. So it's matching uh, exactly as it should be. But you can bring this higher in case you want to do some distant terrains or some stuff that you see way out in the distance for decoration like cliffs or waterfalls or lakes or whatever. You can make the, the triangles a lot bigger because it's cheaper to render and you can read the color a lot better too when stuff's out in the distance. Because the smaller the triangles are for distant geometry, the less faceted it looks. Um, so it might be a stylistic uh, option for you too. So let's try that. So let's boost up the quad size multiplier to two, and we'll do update all. And that was fast. Now you can see what happened. It uh, created a really low poly terrain. And that could be cool for maybe uh, 
some type of stylistic kind of vector game. Um, pretty cool. We can bring that back down one step. Okay, chunk size choice. That's an important slider to understand and use. And let me show you. This is the entire terrain that we're meddling with. That's the entire polyworld terrain. And within that, if you look in the hierarchy view, are all these child game objects. These are our terrain meshes. They're the chunks. So if we select one chunk, so we say that's a chunk, that's a chunk, and if you're generating LODs, it has them on there. <laughs> Let's see, here's one. And for this terrain, there happens to be 64 of those. So for a chunk size of 25 meters and a quad size of 1.5, you're going to get 64 chunks based on this, quad, uh, this chunk size value. That's important because that's essentially how many draw calls your terrain at max is going to be if it wasn't batching. So this box is going to tell you what the results of these choices are going to be. So uh, there are some invalid ones to make or some scary ones. Anything highlighted in yellow is kind of like a warning saying, hey, that's that's kind of like a crazy value. You know, 1024, it's kind of crazy. Or I can, uh, you know, bring this up. Um, Sometimes if you go quad size too high, it's not going to say you can do LODs with that setting because we're not chunking at that size. Okay. Now what's also great in this script is that we can generate LODs. So here we don't have any LODs being generated. But if we... Let's bring this back down to one or four quad. Okay. So we're let's create a terrain that's one for one with our terrain and then generate LODs. We'll update all so we create them okay now if we back away you can see how the terrain is now LOD -ing. what's great about this is that the terrain LODs uh, it only makes one of them so however your quad size and chunk size choices are it's going to create uh, one LOD down from that it's not going to create like four or five LOD chains. So what's great, though, is that the edges of the LODs meet up. And it's good for performance. So if you have a really big terrain that's off in the distance, um, you're going to want LODs, so you're not rendering so much. Uh, what's also cool is you can dynamically adjust the transition distances. So if I wanted my mountain here to transition a little bit closer, I'll just turn up this LOD one size and hit update. A bit more. Yeah. So you can see it. This uh, piece of the chunk is transitioning closer, or I can bring it further out. Yep. This is using Unity standard LOD system, so it's nothing new. I can bring my cold distance in, so maybe the terrain drops out closer. So go ahead and play around with the Pilot World Terrain script component. Um, I think you'll find it pretty easy to use, pretty straightforward, and it's pretty fast and good for performance. Thanks.